<laughs> yes finally this is a fun one what's up sons it's blind drive with some tech once again and today we are going to be taking a look at the amd ryzen 7 5800x and its mining performance in monero along with a couple fun benchmarks in cinebench cpuz firestrike and time spy i hope you enjoy but before we get into it here's a word from our sponsor today's sponsor is myself to support the channel, click the join button down below and you will be able to access our privately hosted Rocket Chat. Selecting the $1.99 option will get you access and after that you just need to head on over to the membership tab, scroll down and expand out your membership perks and find the section for connecting on social media. In that section there will be a secret registration URL for Rocket Chat where you can sign up and enjoy talking with other cryptocurrency enthusiasts and miners without scammers, spammers, or bots. Okay, yeah, we are doing this and practicing because we have a whole bunch of sponsor segments coming up. So I basically made a self-sponsored plug so that we can go ahead and get good at our job because that's what I got to do. All right, so the Ryzen 7 5800X is an eight core 16 thread CPU from AMD with a base clock of 3.8 gigahertz and a max boost clock of 4.7 gigahertz. It has a total L2 cache of four megabytes with a total L3 cache of 32 megabytes. It is unlocked and it's on the TSMC seven nanometer thin FET manufacturing process. It is an AM4 socket, so it'll go into any AM4 motherboard provided you have support for it on that motherboard and it's been updated to the proper BIOS to accompany it. The max temperature is 90 C before it starts basically thermal throttling. So you wanna keep it under that. And a quick note, it doesn't come with the CPU cooler. So you're going to need to add a CPU cooler for yourself. It officially supports up to 3,200 megahertz memory and I have had no issues with 3600 megahertz memory from G-Skill, the Trident Z Neo, which is always my go-to with, of course, any sort of AMD processor. All right, so that's the fun part, right? Not really. The fun part is what we're doing over here. So what we have it under is essentially a copper water block from Heat Killer. It is the full copper version. Yes, it may be a little uglier, but it cools like a beast, so that's why we use it. It's hooked up to a D5 pump with a 100 millimeter reservoir and a 240 by 60 millimeter radiator uh, by Foiba. Yeah, they make the fat ones. Foibas, I kind of love them, but they are a little dirty, so make sure you clean them out. And then we have two 120 millimeter Noctua knockoff fans from Amazon, and we'll link them down below. They work pretty well. If you guys are interested in more tech part reviews let me know i know we focus on cryptocurrency and that will be the main thing but if we add in a couple here and there it could be fun okie doke so moving on over to the good stuff the good stuff yeah all right so cpu z here you can see we have amd ryzen 7 5800x and let's go to the memory clocked at of course you double this so 3600 megahertz with a 16 cas latency yes this can technically go down to 14 we have not started overclocking currently the only thing enabled is the xmp profile as well as precision boost 2.0 and then smart access memory which won't really affect any of the tests that we are doing today okie doke so there's our graphics cards, look at them. Mmm, I put those in multi-GPU. It was fun, if you guys want a video on that too, I'd be happy to. So let's go ahead and bench it on, of course, CPU-Z and get an idea of where, where we are at. And then we have hardware info pulled up here where you can go ahead and take a look at the voltages and so on. So bench CPU, please. Alrighty, so we had a 657.8 on a single thread with 6,633 on the multi-thread. As far as I understand, that's pretty good. I think we had a little bit higher when we overclocked the 5600X, and with overclock we can test and see if we're getting higher on, of course, this later on down the line. 
And then if we take a look, we were hitting 4.8 gigahertz on all cores with that precision boost overdrive 2.0. However, it did knock that voltage up to 1.5 almost on volts. So I'm gonna tune that in because I'm not really a fan of that. Let's check temperatures though. Our max temperature during that was 73.9 C, well under the 90 C thermal throttle. And then on the die, we had 73.8 C. And then on CD, CCD1, we had 75.3 degrees Celsius. I also noticed we've already been mining Monero all night and it didn't really go above 75C from what I could tell when I, I ran this while we were doing it. So it's pretty good on this water block. We're at, at 75C with of course the 1.5 volts. So I'm super dang happy with that. This water block is insane, guys. You gotta pick it up. So now let's go ahead and run Cinebench. All right, we're gonna accept, and then we're gonna run the multi-thread. All righty, so that was a score of 15,334, almost dethroning the 16 core 32 thread Threadripper 1950X, the first gen. So that's pretty cool. The IPC on this is insane to me. All right, so last we're going to go ahead and do the single core, but because it's going to take a long time, let me see here. We're just going to do off and run the test a single time. Alrighty, and I actually don't understand that score. So it says single core score is 1596. Okay, I understand it. Obviously, it's better than almost everything out right now. So sick. That's cool. Not with any overclocking either. All right, so I did some tests outside. We found that Firestrike physics score was 30,245. And the Time Spy physics score was 11,837. For the fun part that everybody enjoys, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at mining Monero. So right here, we are sitting at 123 watts. Let's get that full camera up. And that's at idle. And then obviously with the full system and stuff, you'd have to calculate it the entire system. So we won't do any calculations. Let's get the miner running though. Okie doke. So I have it up and ready to go, I believe, in my games folder. All right. We're going to go ahead and use XM rig. I did attempt XMR stack, but it didn't seem to really pull everything properly. So definitely recommend XMR rig. If you guys need a how to on mining Monero, let me know and we can put that on our list for videos to get to. Okie doke. Alrighty, so we're getting around 570 per thread and it is using all 16 threads as you can see and we are mining at 900 or 9036 hash a second so 9 kilo hash a second which is awesome. Let's go ahead and see how that compares. Actually first of course we need to take a look at power. So currently while running we are at, let's see if it will autofocus. 275 watts, 280 watts. We'll go ahead and put in like 280 watts because it did go up to 285 there. It is fluctuating a little bit. Obviously, if you're mining in Windows with the CPU, a lot of stuff is going on. So it's better, I think, in my opinion, to use something like, of course, Linux for mining Monero. Okay, and then another thing I wanted to point out here is we have room to grow. As you can see, we're only hitting about 4.7 gigahertz on all threads, which means with a manual overclock, we can get even more hash out of this CPU by going ahead and doing a manual overclock because precision boost overdrive is not being applied while running XM rig. So stay tuned on the channel and we will go ahead and get you guys the overclocked version of this later on down the line. So without further ado though, let's go ahead and talk about is it even profitable? All right, so if we take a quick look at what to mine, random X for quantum RL is at 14 cents a day after power consumption and Monero is three cents a day after power consumption. So I wouldn't buy this to mine because your ROI is gonna be incredibly long. But if you want to grab some Monero, go ahead and get it done. 
I do want to talk about this. So obviously we do the CPU test for Monero because it is fun primarily, but also I do support Monero because I believe in the project. And if you have a CPU laying around, I would highly encourage you to go ahead and mine Monero to help secure the network and push it along forward. Monero is also the only kind of ASIC resistant coin that has managed to stay the most decentralized thanks to it being of course a uh, CPU mined primarily. So because of that CPU mining, you don't have huge mining farms typically in Monero. It's a lot of people mining on individual CPUs everywhere, which is pretty cool. Now they do have an issue with, of course, the majority of the hash rate being on a single pool. And that's just something that needs to get resolved at some point. So I would recommend looking around for pools that maybe have a little bit less hash rate and putting your power towards there to basically help the decentralization of the coin. If you guys need help with, of course, mining Monero and you are interested in doing it, let me know in the comment section below and we'll make a how-to video. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm super happy with my 5800X. Of course, I would like to have a 5900X or a 5950X, but you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. I'll see you next Tuesday. If you enjoyed this content, you can check out more crypto content on this playlist up here, or of course, Go ahead and subscribe for more in the future. Adios.